Good morning. It is the front page Saturday Town Hall edition. I'm Dominique DePrima, and we are continuing our conversation. Brianna Taylor, justice denied. We are taking your phone calls, 520-KJLH, 520-5554, add your area code, and you are in. And I want to let you uh, remind you that we do have our rollout and register, our radio free rollout and register 2020 jumping off this week. We are teaming up with Blackout the Ballot and uh, April's Life in a Bottle. We're going to be at the Amp Kitchen, South LA, 6130 South Avalon Boulevard. That is Wednesday from 4 to 7. You can drive up and keep driving. You can drive up as long as you got your mask. You can get on out. We'll have ex- um, experts there to talk with you. We'll have music. I'll be there just hanging out and hoping that you are going to be inspired to bring 10 of your friends. Uh, if you are disenfranchised for some reason or having trouble with your registration, maybe you never voted before, we've got help for you. All that on Wednesday. Looking forward to seeing you. So honored to uh, bring into the conversation this morning uh, our friend. She's a professor, former chair of Pan-African Studies at Cal State LA. And uh Past president, current counsel for affirmative action uh, for the California Faculty Association. She's also lead organizer for Black Lives Matter at Los Angeles. Dr. Melina Abdullah, good morning. Dr. Abdullah, welcome to the front page, welcoming the future president of the School of Ethnic Studies for Cal State <laughs> LA. <laughs> good morning. Well, thank you for claiming that. I'll be the people's dean, right? Uh, um, uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Need to be the college's dean too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. This is um this is, you know, work that you've been doing for years long before, you know, the entire country started walking uh, with you, uh, or much of the country, I should say. Um, what, what's your response when you heard about uh, uh, um, Breonna Taylor and the decision by the grand jury under the, air quotes, guidance of Attorney General Daniel Cameron? Sure. So um, I think none of us were shocked. Right. Um, We were outraged, but not shocked. And um, I think that we saw this coming, that we know that the criminal system of injustice does not meet out justice for black people, for black women. It devalues black life. Um, We knew that when they started boarding up government buildings and um, uh, stores and that kind of thing a couple days before that, um, there must be something in the air, right? There must, they must be anticipating something. And so I think we weren't surprised. And of course, the more we heard about who Daniel Cameron was, um, the more it sounded like, you know, this was a setup that the fix was in. And, um, I think that, um, the outrage is and the willingness of people to stand up is what, um, we should draw our encouragement from. I think you've been really, really, and Black Lives Matter in general, has been really good about the vision of what we want. I mean, because I feel like, you know, it is true that if we we repeatedly watch these tapes of of our people being killed and brutalized, and if we repeatedly uh, focus on what we don't want, it can leave us without the vision of what we are trying to create. Um, So talk to me a little bit about that. You know, pivoting off of just, you know, I can't breathe and and watching these tapes and being so angry, which which is justified anger. But how do we focus on what we want and, and how do you see that? Sure. So I think that one of the things that this country that, you know, these structures try to do is to limit black imagination, right? So we're so caught up in this response mode. We're so caught up in survival mode that we don't sit back and engage what Robin Kelly calls our radical imagination. And so I think we have to steal that time to imagine, right? It's important to remember that um, many of us call ourselves abolitionists, imagining a world without police and prisons. Um, But if we think about who people traditionally think of as abolitionists, people like Harriet Tubman, people like Henry Highland Garnett and David Walker, they weren't just imagining the end to chattel slavery. They were also imagining and charting a course to freedom. And so we have to draw inspiration from that. And I think that people like Sister Helen Jones, who you just had on, are really 
um, strong examples of how to do that, even embedded in her story about what happened to John Horton, right? She's talking about how he shouldn't have been in jail in the first place, right? So what does it look like when you talk about somebody who was supposed to be in a program and then goes to jail for not going into the program, right? So how do we make um, options more abundant. So what we're imagining um, as we say things like defund the police and we should absolutely defund the police. They gobble up 54% of our city's general fund in Los Angeles. And when we're spending on police, what we're not spending on is the things that actually make communities safe. So as we say defund the police, we also say reimagine public safety, recognizing that for every black person I know, none of us feel safer when a police car pulls up behind us, right? But all of us feel safer when we see our neighbors on the front porch, right? All of us feel safer when people are housed. All of us feel safer when people have the quality food that they need, when our young people have somewhere to go after school. And so we need to um, invest in those kinds of things. We need to make sure people have access to mental health resources and physical health resources, especially in the midst of a pandemic, right? Where, you know, depression is on the rise, where even, you know, in the uh, circle of young people that I um, have the honor of um, kind of mothering and I guess, I don't think this is a word, but I'll make it up, auntieing, right? I've seen... <laughs> um, <laughs> I've seen depression and I've seen the children break down and feel isolated because they're not with their friends every day and they don't get to run and play and do art. And so how are we providing resources for them? And then I'll be quiet after this. I think that the ridiculousness can be marked by things like LAUSD continues to spend about $50 million on school police when there are no schools open, they could be spending that money providing mental health resources, providing tutoring for kids who are learning online for the very first time. But instead, they're spending on police that we don't need. And we as a society need to get away from that and really fundamentally reimagine what public safety looks like. Mm, I'm going to quote my mom this morning, something I've never done on the radio before. One of her poems, mm -hmm. it says, the ultimate famine is the starvation of the imagination. And I, I think, Absolutely. you know... Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a powerful case. How do you change anything if you can't see what it is you want to change it into? Um, so uh, Cameron called earlier this morning, and he wanted to know why, why wasn't there a thorough due process in terms of the Second Amendment rights of Breonna Taylor's boyfriend, who shot back when, you know... Uh, Plain clothes officers who could have been anyone, right, could have been any kind of criminals, broke down the door in the middle of the night. Well, I think, Cameron, the, the short version is this system was not set up to give justice to Breonna Taylor, to Daryl Walker, to black people, to black women, right? If Breonna Taylor had have been a white woman, the outcome would have likely been different, right? The idea that the only indictments are for the bullets that it went into the white neighbor's home, right? Um, I think that's very, very telling. And so, you know, black people don't get the Second Amendment, Second Amendment rights. Think about the murder of Philando Castile, right? He had a Second Amendment right to carry a gun. He announced it, and he was still murdered at the hands of police in Minnesota and so it's really important to remember that there are rights for some, but this country has always denied black rights. And so that's why we have to transform, not simply reform the world in which we live. All right. I want to go to Michael uh, calling us from Los Angeles. Good morning, Michael. Michael, you're on with Dr. Abdullah. Hey, uh, Dominic. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I, I wanted to know, you always you asked the, uh, answered the question earlier, but once again, what is the legal term that they use for the bullets going into the white residents and the neighbor that lived upstairs, there's no charge. So, I mean, what is the difference? Right. Um, well, it's the difference. I think, you know, I think the cliche is, uh, you know, a dis uh, 
an attorney general or a DA can indict a ham sandwich. The difference is what did Daniel Cameron tell them to do? Uh, the the wanton endangerment charge. To me, it's also a statement about property over people, which is one of the problems we have with our police system. You know, they're protecting property instead of people um, many times. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I just echo it. You said um, the police continue to um, protect property over people. And I think that um, should also be a warning to us when they feed us narratives um, about so-called violence and the violence that they're pointing to is, you know, tagging or a window being broken. Um, it's really an attempt to divert us from um, the lives that are stolen at the hand. So I have to take it back and say that people are always more important than property. Hello. Uh, April Sims calling us from Simply Wholesome slash April's Life in a Bottle. Good morning, April. Good morning, my sister. Good morning, Dr. Abdullah. Both of my sisters on the line this morning. I'm so honored to be able to be in the presence of both of you fabulous sisters doing the work for all of us. Black Lives Matter is so very important, so thank you, Queen. I just wanted to echo everything that's been said so far this morning, and I really wanted to encourage people to come out that are available to come out on Wednesday over at Amp Kitchen South LA at 6130 South Avalon to register to vote, bring friends like Dominique said. And Dominique, for the first 50 people that come out to register, I will personally gift them with one of my delicious juices of April's Life in a Bottle drink. So please come out, get your free juice on, and get registered to vote. Let's make a change now. April's trying to give you life and get you registered to vote. And uh, April, you know, April was the one that called me and said, hey, we got to do something. And, and we came up with this. And thank you so much for caring always and, and always, you know, putting your money and your time where your mouth is on these issues. Absolutely. So I'll see you and see everyone else on Monday, 6130 South Avalon, right near Avalon and Gage. Come on out and let's make a difference now. Dr. Abdullah, you also have an event uh, today or this weekend? Next weekend. So That's I'm right. actually going to be texting April a little bit later on today. And I want to uplift um, how important um, she is. Everybody doesn't always know what everybody else is contributing to movement and to black life. But um, April and Simply Wholesome have fed the movement since our inception seven years ago. Simply Wholesome has been a place where we can come and meet when it's not COVID, right? Um, they mm -hmm. open up space for Black Lives Matter when it's not popular. Um, but she also comes out and feeds us. You know, we often have events. And next Saturday, um, October 3rd, we're going to be in Norman Houston Park because we're thinking about um, the murder of Breonna Taylor. And we have to continue to recognize it as a murder, right? The murder of Breonna Taylor and what that means, that they can steal black women's lives and then blame us for our own deaths, right? And so I was thinking about, it just felt so heavy. And I think a lot of the sisters in my life were feeling the same way. Yes. And, you know, I kept thinking about... Um, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, that black women are the mules of the world. And that's what it felt like. And then I thought about, but we're not mules. You know, black women are divine. We're not mules. We're, you know, specially created by God to usher in vision, to usher in divine will. And so on Saturday, October 3rd in Norman Houston Park, right on the corner of La Brea and Stocker, we're going to be having Black Women Are Divine, a reclamation in the name of Breonna Taylor. So we invite Black women to come and celebrate an afternoon of healing, of reclamation of our divinity. Um, we're going to have food and music and um, spiritual work and um, uh, body work and breath work. We're going to do a little yoga. And so we invite everybody to come out. Um, I'm going to text Sister April a little later on to see if she'll come out. Um, and you'll be there, too. 
Of course I will. It's at noon. Is that what time it is? Or Yeah, it's at noon. It starts at noon. Yes. Noon on, family. Noon on. Yes. Uh, I never knew the name of that park, even though there's a huge sign right there. Uh, Norman O. Houston Park right there at La Brea uh, and, and uh, Stalker, the Hump, the Hill. Um, Dr. Melina Abdullah, you know... Talk to me a little bit about this election, right? Um, we, we were doing radio free rollout and register. I know Measure J uh, bears some conversation for sure. I'm big on yes on uh, Prop 16 and uh, bringing back affirmative action to the state of L.A. I know you've been working on the district attorney's race. Just give me a little bit of a, a vibe uh, or some inspiration around this election. Sure. Well, one, we have to vote. We have to vote. Whether you care about who's at the top of the ticket or not, there's a bunch of stuff at stake, right? So you might not be a Joe Biden fan. I'm not a Joe Biden fan. I'm still going to vote for president. But um, there are things that impact our daily lives, like the district attorney's race. So we know that 622 people have been killed by police in Los Angeles County since Jackie Lacey took office. And she has chosen not to prosecute any, just one officer has even faced charges. And so um, we have to vote her out. Um, We have to vote for Prop 16 to um, push for racial equity, right? We have to vote for Prop 17 to restore voting rights uh, to people who've already completed their prison terms. Um, We need to vote yes on Measure J, which is absolutely about defunding L.A. County sheriffs, L.A. County jails, and putting that money into the things that create safe communities like mental health, like housing, like jobs. And so even if you are going, well, I don't really care about the outcome of the president, and I don't know how you could say you don't care about the outcome of who's in office because who's in office couldn't possibly be worse. Um, But even if you don't care, even if you think these are bad choices, we need you to vote on these other things. And so um, we're moving. We don't have money. We're not a narrow lobby group like police associations are. But we have the power of the people. And so people will notice that there's signs that got put together um, that say Jackie Lacey must go that are scattered around the county. Um, We're doing calling our friends. We're asking everybody to text five people and tell them vote Jackie Lacey out. Um, And we're also having forums um, every Thursday at 7 p.m. We have something called This Is Not a Drill on Black Lives Matter Facebook page where we talk about the issues that are important to us. And we've talked about prop 17, we're going to be talking with Shirley Weber about Prop 16. We're going to be talking about why Jackie Lacey must go um, this Thursday at 7. Um, and that's again on Facebook, um, Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. All right. Um, real quick, we'll go to Miss Holmes calling from L.A. Miss Holmes, short version if you would. Yes, uh, good, after- good morning, Dominique. Good morning. Morning. Blessings on all the work that you've been doing, uh, uh, Dr. Adubo. Who knew that Black Lives Matter was going to blow up like it did? Um, short version. I happened to be looking on uh, social media somewhere, and I saw that Cameron, uh, Daniel Cameron, the district attorney in Louisville, was getting married. And I think he should have been real and human about why there was really a delay. He married a Caucasian. Of course, that is not uh, against the law now. But it's just the fact that he, while other people were postponing their personal um, events and affairs and occasions like that uh, during a pandemic, he was partaking in it. Right. And I just okay. think there's a cover-up, don't you? Regard- is there a cover-up? I, I couldn't really hear what He's she talking, was saying. She was talking about Daniel Cameron and how he went ahead and had his engagement party and got married in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of the crisis around Breonna Taylor, what it says about him, and she feels there's a cover-up in the Breonna Taylor case. Well, I just saw all that information about how his wife is Mitch McConnell's niece, and, you know, 
there he was even before Brianna Taylor being groomed um, for a higher office, being groomed for possibly the Supreme Court. Um, and I think that, you know, I call myself a conspiracy realist. I think <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make sense to me for it to not be plotted and planned. And um, I think that um, even if it wasn't planned in advance, I think what he's done is proven himself to be loyal to the white supremacist establishment. Mm, yeah, we have to leave it there. That's well said. Dr. Melina Abdullah, thank you so much for joining us. We can follow um, BLMLA. We can follow you at Doc Melly Mel. Appreciate all the work that you're doing. You just are relentless, and it is so important. We appreciate you. Thank you, sis. Passing the mic to uh, Guy Black for some amazing uh, music. Um, and I'm going to close with a quote from my mom. The ultimate famine is the starvation of the imagination. Until next time, Radio Free Family. One.